Hey guys, my name is Octoman and this is part 26 of my turn-based build system tutorial. In this part we are going over and change the handling of the regions. Um, a patron of myself was yeah, telling me that it's going to be not that easy to set up and can easily be yeah, troublesome. If you have 200 regions, for example, then you need um, yeah, 200 tags for all regions and same for um, the hero itself. It needs to check all that uh, different tags for different regions. And so what I want to do is I want to simplify everything in here. And yeah, let's get started within the game manager itself. So what we are going to do is we extract the region itself and uh, make it an old class and we want to pass over uh, the region data directly to every region we are gonna have and later on we can just uh, create a prefab out of this so we can just duplicate the prefab or the specific region with specific um, yeah, stuff inside. Um, so I hope the game manager is going to open soon and when that will be then I will be back. So what we are going to do in the game manager at first is we are getting rid of the wool region data class. So I just go over and um, toggle uh, the line command. So I command this one out. And same as you can see, this is a list of the region data itself is going to be obsolete in this case too. So what we are going to do or I'm going to do is I create a new class called region data and we'll pass over the information directly into that new class. So I hop back for just a second. And in my prefabs, uh, no, in my scripts folder, I create a new folder, which is uh, going to be everything about regions. So later on, if there is anything I want to go over and um, yeah, put into that too, then I will have a special folder for this. And I create a C sharp script called region data. And gonna open this one up too in mono develop. And in here what we do is at first we get rid of the start and the update function and the class from the main and man or from the game manager we extract everything in here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. So what we take is a maximum amount of enemies, a battle scene, and of course a list of game objects for possible enemies. I'm gonna copy them and pass them over into uh, the region data class. Also we toggle the line command once again. And as you can already see that lists are not available. So what we do is we um, increase or actually make use of the namespace system.collections.generic as always. And don't forget to save the region data class. In game manager we actually could go over and yeah, go, uh, delete everything in here what I just um, yeah, commented out before. And same uh, for the list we have just created. And the public int current regions in the game manager is going to be in uh, of type region data in, uh, in the next year, so some minutes. So um, we pass over later on the region data directly from the region data class and save that in current region. So we will make use of this. So also I deleted the S on the current region. So because it's just one later on, don't forget to save the changes. If you haven't already, um, yeah, just save the changes for the region data too. And now we need to reconstruct the start battle a bit. So what we do is instead of regions and square brackets, re, uh, the current regions, we get rid of them and we say just car region. And the same for everything else, which is going to be read in here is car region dot possible enemies, car region dot possible enemies again. And the same in here for, for the scene to load. Um, is going to be current region 2. Don't forget to save. So now we are done with the changes in the game manager itself, also for the changes in region data. But we need to also change stuff in the hero movement. So open this one up. And when it comes to the, um, yeah, the, to the tag system in here, uh, we need to, yeah, uh, make that a bit different. So what we do is I just go over and use at least, or actually just one 
tag. We go over and create that in just a second. And I call this one encounter region or encounter zone, for example. So this is going to be the only tag we are using for our current region. And what we do in here is um, we can get rid of uh, the second region in here. And instead of car region, which um, we have in the current, uh, yeah, in the, the current encounter zone, we want to pass over in the on trigger enter, enter function the collision objects um, component, which is of type region data later on. So what we do is we say uh, we create a, a new instance of region data. We call this one just region. And what we do with that is we take the collision object other from uh, the other tag or other collision actually. So other dot game object. And now what we do is we get the component out of it, which is of type region data, of course. And then some brackets in here and there we go. So we take that and store that into the variable region. And now what we can do is we can set the inst the, the game manager instance uh, instance dot current or current region is going to be equal to region. So the region we just uh, created in here, or actually we just got the information from. Okay, and where is the, with that done, we're gonna save. And what we also want to do is we want to change the same stuff to on trigger stay and on trigger exit. So we copy over uh, the if other tag is encounter zone to this one, the rest will stay the same and the same will be done in here. So we have the encounter zone in here too. And we will change the can get encounter depending on that. So what we now need to do is we need to create uh, the region data directly for our um, yeah, for our encounter regions currently that are just uh, those small boxes in here. And what we want to do is we just drag region data onto one of those boxes we have. This is currently encounter region 2. So instead of the region 2 tag, we go over and create a new tag. And this tag is going to be um, the encounter tag. So encounter zone. If you don't know, uh, if you would have any typos, feel free to just um, yeah, select that, copy and paste that directly into the unit editor. So you will not have any problems later on. Also, make sure that you pass over that tag to the selected region. So we say this is going to be encounter zone. And instead of region one and two, we basically can get rid of them. What you need to do is to select that one that is blue underlined or blue marked and press a minus on here so you won't lose any other informations like that. Okay, so now we got rid of that encounter uh, uh, that regions. Again, we need to redefine that to encounter zone because we lost the connection because we were just deleting the two other region data or region one and region two tags. So when where's that done, we can say, okay, the maximum amount for this is going to be four still. The scene, the battle scene we are going in is at this point again, the battle scene. And all as always, you can pass on any scene name you like. And we can say we want to have one or maybe two possible enemies in this particular zone or later on zone prefab. And we can go over in and drag in all our enemies or enemy prefabs into that um, into that zone. So enemy one and enemy two, for example, can be encountered in this particular region. Now we can go into our prefabs folder again and create a new folder for this. And again, this is going to be uh, stuff about regions or just regions. And we can drag in encounter region two into that as a prefab. So now we have that prefab done, we can now copy and paste it wherever we want to and can always go in and enable all that stuff. And the same can be done now for every other region in here. So what we basically could do is we delete all of them, for example. Uh, for now, we could go over and duplicate the existing ones since we have the region data um, stuff already on that. We can go over and, of course, scale that to our needs. Later on with other prefabs, you can also do the same. 
um, was a bit too much I don't know maybe like this and pass that wherever we need that and to in, and in this region we say okay we have only one possible enemy like enemy one for example and what we can do right now is we rename that region um, to region one for example like this and then we pass that over into the prefabs region um, yeah one two so we will load the battle scene again in here we will have a maximum amount of four enemies for this particular scene we can also say we only want two of them as a maximum and we have enemy one in here which we are able to encounter and that's pretty much everything um, for this small tutorial let's go over and test this one out if everything still works as it has to be or has to do so we can walk around in this over here and we should be able to yeah get into the scene and we should be able to attack our enemies and we are back in our scene so everything works once again and yeah that's pretty much everything i wanted to cover in this small let's say fix region data tutorial thanks for watching the tutorial i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already thumbs this video up if you like it and feel free to become my patron or donate by using paypal to support me and my channel in the future all links will be below in the description see you in the next tutorial bye bye